Jumanji is back, and once again, The Rock, Kevin Hart, and Jack Black are getting together. All three are super charismatic, we've covered them in previous breakdowns, but today I thought it would be fun to combine their strengths and talk about how you can build rock-solid confidence from the ground up, going from shy to confident. And to do this, I'll be pulling from some previous videos I've made, as well as some new clips to learn how to combine the best of Kevin, Dwayne, and Jack into one confident mega beast. So let's start from ground zero. You're new to a group, no one knows you, or maybe you're even in that group for a while but you're just shy. It's hard to feel confident when you're being ignored or overlooked. And it's in these times that Kevin Hart's penchant for commanding attention is exactly what you need. Now you know when you get smacked when you're a kid, you get hyped. When you get by yourself, you gonna smack me in front of my friends! You gonna smack me! There are two important steps to commanding attention while you speak. First, you need to grab attention and then you have to keep it. Now, when it comes to grabbing people's attention, giving them a reason to care goes a long way. So no matter if you're about to tell a story, make a joke, or contribute your opinion on something, you can more easily get a group to listen by describing why what you're about to say matters, like Kevin does here. And then you got you got asked to meet the President of the United States? Huge. Huge. I mean, let me, let, let me, let me tell you why this was huge, Jim. Kevin achieves the goal of gathering attention even more subtly in this next clip by hinting at a strong emotion in the story to come. Here's where my frustration moment came. I'm this by is, myself. This is real, I can tell. This is this real. Is, this is gonna be a real one. I'm, I'm by myself. <laughs> These habits can help wallflowers avoid what is unfortunately fairly common for them, having their contributions and conversation ignored. But if you give people a reason, a strong emotion, or just hint at some drama to come, you build anticipation and make people more likely to listen to what you're about to say. Now one thing that can be tricky if you're shy is the penchant groups have to interrupt one another. If you're shy, you're likely to defer rather easily and potentially fall out of conversation entirely. So a simple, better habit to convey confidence is to be a bit less deferential when you begin to speak. And one way to do this is to repeat yourself until you have the group's attention. This is a fairly extreme version, but here's what it looks like when Kevin does it. Right now, let's, uh, I think it's happening that I'm the honest. cool guy. Lewis. Kevin is incredibly awkward in the way he's handling this I think we need to be honest here. I don't think I've ever been the awkward guy. <laughs> Now this level of persistence may feel over the top, but when you're extremely shy, moving in the direction of being more assertive is often what is necessary. It doesn't mean that you need to repeat every little sentence that is talked over or that you'll never get cut off again, but it does mean that you should practice repeating yourself a few times in the event that you do get cut off, even if it means coming back to a point after a short detour where the group went in a different direction. Now, repeating yourself might get, well, a little bit repetitive. So another simple way to grab people's attention is by speaking a bit more loudly than usual. And of course, this can be in extreme cases, as is here with the joke. I just want to Sorry. back roll up. Back your yeah. security! <laughs> <laughs> is this serious? <laughs> or you can simply enter into conversation with a bit of a louder tone to clear some airtime to convey your ideas, like here. It's right really there. bad. This yep. is really bad. No but as you can um, see, I was a cool kid, though. He was, I was cool in I was high school. Cool That's kid. the thing. Yeah. Always cool. You could tell I never had a problem with being cool. In order to keep attention once you've captured it, having something interesting to say is, of course, a good thing, but often not enough. You've probably heard a teacher or professor delivering a lecture in a monotonous voice. No matter how good the content is, it's easy to lose focus. But look how Kevin Hart tells a story. And I'd be damned if I didn't feel the flame like... like <laughs> Oh Brush by my cheek a little bit. I said, hey, man, <laughs> I just stopped the flame. He's like, he goes, impossible. And I said to myself, I was like, I'm sick of this shit. <laughs> if you speak like this, alternating with moments of more slowed, subdued energy, and then with moments of higher intensity, perhaps volume and pace, you keep people's attention. Changing your pitch and playing characters by giving them different voices and gesticulating can be even more effective because it pulls people into the story like here. When it comes to really painting the picture, Jake is, they're coming, da, they jump. <laughs> this stuff comes out. If that seems like too much for strangers, you can start by practicing this habit with your friends. That way it doesn't matter if you come across as a little bit goofy. Moving along, once you get comfortable commanding attention, the most confident thing to do can be counterintuitive. It's to redistribute some of that attention back to other people. This is where the rock style comes in. He is a big dude in every way, from his physical size, to his gestures, to his smile, to his position as a triple A list celebrity. So attention naturally gravitates towards him. You can still it's, it's okay. Come on, come here. Come here. Come on, man. Come here. Look, it's pretty. It's beautiful. Look at that. Just a butterfly. 
Just come here. It's always me. Look, look. Hold, hold your hand up. But instead of basking in the spotlight and making everything about himself, Dwayne takes the opposite approach. He often brings it back to other people. And when you make the people around you feel included and appreciated, you set yourself up as a leader in any situation, which of course can make your confidence skyrocket. Now an easy and super effective way to make people feel included is by giving them recognition, especially when they're not expecting it. For instance, watch how Dwayne remembers and congratulates this interviewer. Really excited when I found out you were going to be in this movie because I thought. Hold on a second, dude. Hold on. Hold okay. on a second. Congratulations. I know it's a year, year and a half ago you graduated, dude. Thank Good you, my friend. See you. Good yeah, to see you're you. You're kicking ass. You're out in the world. You're kicking ass. Hanging out with you. You're in Rio. Uh, with you, out. man. Look at this. Where do we go? It's all downhill from here. Where do we go? <laughs> or take a look here where he praises the interviewer's question and acknowledges his passion for his job. How do they make that look like you actually fell down, hit the landing, and then you continue in the same shot? So, cool question. So, we had a camera rig on... I love your questions, by the way. Thanks, Dude, man. This is why you love movies, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I love this. You know I love this stuff, <laughs> I, I man. This is my do. favorite stuff to ask. I love it. In your own life, you can deliver these types of compliments after someone tells a funny story or shares something that they're proud of. You pause the flow of conversation for a short bit just to let them know what you appreciate about them, assuming, of course, that you do in fact appreciate it. It is a short moment, but it can mean a lot to someone. Now, this is especially true of those people who might expect to be overlooked. This can be younger colleagues at school or work or the service people at your favorite food joint. A good rule of thumb when you're in a position of high status is that if you find yourself telling a story or answering questions for more than two minutes, it's it's probably a good idea to bring it back to the other person by asking their opinion, turning the question back on them, or just starting a new, more inclusive conversational thread. Though, of course, if they insist on hearing you share a story or a lesson, it's totally fine to continue. Now, another way in which Dwayne involves other people and makes them feel appreciated is through friendly touch. Here you can see him expressing his love for Danny DeVito, who he knows quite well at this point. I love you. I love you. I love you. I love you too. But for people who he might not be comfortable kissing on the head, The Rock also has a habit of offering enthusiastic high fives. Herman, right now I got your carrot top. Reese Witherspoon. Hell yeah! How badass was that? Dude! Despite how juvenile they may seem, high fives are actually an easy way to spread positivity and develop confidence for leading a conversation in a more energetic direction. When you offer someone a high five for any silly reason, most people will follow your lead and it tends to boost both people's mood, which of course leads to both of you feeling more confident for the rest of that interaction. In love. <laughs> and the last thing, which you also saw in that last clip, is to laugh generously. It's a simple way to give appreciation in a way that lifts everyone up, and it's especially effective once you've become a leader in your group. <laughs> just fucking just... So far, we've talked about building from shyness towards greater comfort in holding attention, then to spreading that attention back to others as your confidence booms. But one thing that is common to both modes of being, whether you're more towards the shy or already feeling a bit more confident, is the need for commitment. And this is where Jack Black comes in, because he fully commits to his actions. That's what makes him able to go off with hilarious bits of physical comedy like here. You see another great example of that commitment in this next clip where Jack is asked to imitate The Rock and he even gets that habit of recognizing interviewers as he does so. I'm glad you asked that question. First of all, you're uh, Kathleen from Screen Junkies, right? <laughs> I never forget a face, I never forget a thing. Life is a delicious drink that you have to suck deep. <laughs> Now, commitment can be easier said than enacted when you're in an uncomfortable position, because in those situations, most of us get very stuck in our heads, wondering how we're being perceived. But of course, acting hesitant only makes us feel less confident, which makes us come across even worse. And you can see this vicious cycle in action in a young Jaden Smith. In this next clip, he has the right idea of repeating himself when he's cut off, but without conviction, he just gets talked over and feels doubly ignored. Yeah, oh, but no. yeah, no, that is something. Do you guys? That'll you know, get you were, really humble. How really does that keep you humble? No, the truth, well, because people sort of often. The solution then to building more conviction is actually to lowering your standards. Oftentimes that lack of conviction comes from an inability to simply relax and do something that you're unfamiliar with less than perfectly, to allow yourself to say something dumb or do something poorly without self-reproach as Jack often does. And you can see in his Dwayne Johnson rant, for instance, that he repeats the same words but just plows through. That's the approach that I take to life. That's how I approach everything. Life is a delicious drink that you have to suck deep. Uh, there's no time. And when he plays basketball with Kevin Hart, he's terrible, but his enthusiasm makes everyone glad to have him on the court anyway. All right, it's 
it's game time! I yelled that so loud I got lightheaded. Yes! You ready? And this is yet another key. Jack is committed to having fun. And when you fully commit to the things that you do from that perspective of having fun, most people will end up liking and respecting you no matter how ridiculous you look. And even more importantly, you will feel much more confident because you won't be held back by your perceived lack of skill or talent. Here Jack is explaining the core of this mindset. You see my moves? Yeah. I did. So I don't really have the moves. No, you do. But I thought I'd make up for it with just like commitment. Instead of putting all this in practice, first figure out where you are on the spectrum from more shy and reserved to outgoing and talkative. If you're closer to shy, play around with speaking more loudly like Kevin Hart. Get a bit more into your characters when you tell story and speak as if you expect to be listened to, perhaps repeating yourself if you get cut off. If you're already more of an outgoing leader, you might try laughing a little bit bigger at other people's jokes like The Rock. You can give enthusiastic high fives to include more people or simply deliver compliments with eye contact and sincerity to further reinforce Force your own confidence while making other people feel good. If you practice even just for a day one of these behaviors in a way that is committed to being playful, your results in confidence will shoot through the roof. If you want more help with how exactly to do that, our Charisma University program comes with 30 daily action guides that give you the step-by-step -step path to unshakable confidence. You can read all about it in the link below, but the best way to let you know what the course is about is to just let members speak for themselves. So here are just a few of the things that CU members have written in. The first is from a guy who was interviewed for new jobs. He says, I interviewed at dozens of places for jobs after medical school. At the end of one of my interview days, the doctor pulled me aside and said that I hands down had the best interview out of everybody and they would love to have me at their program. They ranked me number one and it's my current job. Another person wrote about their social life saying, it has been truly incredible. I've instantly had results that seem insane. So many more meaningful connections. My friendships have improved and my interactions with total strangers are new, exciting, Exciting, fulfilling thing. I want to recommend this to everyone. This should be in our basic education system. And this last one is from someone who says that the course has been life-changing. And he says, your course has been life-changing. To the point where I wake up in the mornings feeling like I've been transferred to a new person's body. The person I kept dreaming about becoming before I found Charisma on Command. It is incredible. I found myself and I found what makes me happy. And you can see more success stories like these in the comments if you decide to join the course. If you do so, it comes with a 60-day money-back guarantee guarantee, which is 100% for any reason at all. And I make it 60 days, even though the course is only 30, because I want to make sure that every single member truly feels like they're getting a ton of value out of the course. Otherwise, you can just refund. So if you want to check the course out, go ahead, click the link on screen now or below in the description. We've had thousands of members go through this course, get a ton out of it, introverts, extroverts, men and women from all over the globe. And I would love for you to do the same. Either way, I hope that you enjoyed this video and I look forward to seeing you in the next one.